Intense moments. This is just some of the newly released footage showing St. Louis police rushing to stop a killer inside a South City High School. It's taken nearly two years to get this video. Only First Alert 4 Investigates has thoroughly investigated the attack by a former student. And we've done this to one, make sure our community is informed, and two, ask, did we learn anything to prevent future violence? The two new videos from police are the first we have ever seen inside Central Visual Performing Arts High School since that attack that killed a student and a teacher. Here's a timeline of what happened on October 24th, 2022. Just before 9.02 a.m., the shooter arrived at the school. He can see his car pull up in surveillance video released today. Then at 9.07, he shoots his way into a door with an unarmed school security guard. One minute later, the first 911 call. They say the active shooter inside the gym, a black male, all black clothing, shots fired in progress. The first radio dispatch is at 9.11. Police locate the suspect at 923. In the library. And by 926, oh, no, the suspect is in custody, killed in a shootout with officers. Now, the video is disturbing, hard to watch, but for the families of the victims, it poses an opportunity to make sure you and your fellow St. Louisans don't feel the same pain that they're currently dealing with and will for the rest of their lives. First Alert 4 investigator Susan L. Corey walking us through tonight the lessons that can be learned here. Susan. Sam, our investigates team has been going through the new video put out today, and we're matching it up with all the records that we uncovered that investigators have fought to keep private. The video release comes days after our First Alert 4 investigation revealed hours of recordings, including 911 calls, police interviews with witnesses, and hundreds of pages of the police report. Together with the video, they provide the most in-depth look at what happened. We know the video isn't easy to watch, but we do believe it's important to share to understand safety. And it's only when we have information that we can see if there were missed opportunities and lessons learned that can help prevent another tragedy. One of the potential lessons deals with school security. In the surveillance video, we're seeing how unarmed school security guards responded. This clip is looking down the hallway at the door where the gunman shot his way through. It's a little grainy, but you can see the guard stationed at the door. He was unarmed. You see how he stood, then ran down the hallway. That guard later told police that he radioed for help. Another clip shows a guard who said he ran downstairs when he heard the calls for help. You see him run back up. And then a few seconds later, you see the shooter there appearing at the stairs. Jean Kuchka's family has questioned the school security setup. St. Louis Public School District uses private security guards, most of them unarmed. They do have a mobile armed unit. They travel between different schools. Now, guards are different from school resource officers, commonly called SROs. They are sworn law enforcement who are contracted to work inside schools. I believe having an SRO there would have made a difference. I believe so. A lot of times it's just the deterrent. And when it, almost all the schools and in the area have SROs in their schools and the city doesn't have them? I mean, I think anytime anyone gets in the school is a failure on the security guard that's not supposed to be in there. And then you've got someone who comes in with a gun and kills people. Um, I, I just, I don't know what to say to that. Another potential lesson involves communication in moments where time mattered. Records we uncovered show the first 911 call came from a passing driver. The school security guard who you see in the video at the door didn't call police. The district's offsite security dispatch is the one who dialed 911. Only first alert for investigates obtained that recording. In it, you can hear how the employee who was not at the school had to radio guards who were all at a time when those moments were critical. And is the suspect still in the gym? Is they still moving around? Has that anyone been hit? My traffic is quiet. Repeat your transmission. We talked to a researcher who tracks school shootings across the country. He tells us the initial moments count when it comes to getting help. St. Louis school security was on the same channel as the police department or had a way to communicate with them. Then they could have notified them this incident was happening and then relaying the information that they had about the location of the shooter in the school. That would absolutely save time. 
Another possible lesson deals with mental health. We uncovered the writings the shooter left behind. It's another record police still have not released. In those pages, he wrote about being suicidal and said he wanted to die by police. School shooting experts say they see that in the video that police put out today. He ultimately stops himself. He goes to an upstairs hallway and he stands outside of the computer lab for about two and a half minutes just waiting for police to arrive and waiting for those officers to kill him. He said in his journals that he was suicidal, that he wanted to die, that his goal was to die. And we need to remember that ultimately school shooters are committing a violent public suicide. And it's when we have information, we can not only see what happened, but also talk about the moments to learn from. There are still gaps in what we know. The families of Jean Kuchka and Alexandria Bell tell us they deserve those answers. Sam? All right, Susan, still ahead.